don't let too much line out. And you just cackle. You've got the fish in it. You just cackle. Morning, Darlene. Hi there, Dr. LaForty. Social prescribing is a way for those people who come in the door for medical reasons um, to find non-medical solutions where they're appropriate. And we're all very proud of our healthcare system, but we all have encounters where we just don't feel healthy. We don't feel heard and seen. We're rushed in and rushed out. We have to say our, our, our one complaint as though it's not connected to the rest of our lives. And that's something that we need to change. The Alliance for Healthier Communities is delighted to be bringing social prescribing here to Ontario. We are so fortunate to have the world leaders on social prescribing not only with us on stage today, but on hand for the next 18 months as mentors and guides as we embark on this new journey. The reality is that you are much more than what your doctor knows about you. You are much more than the sum of your diagnoses, your medical history, medication you might be taking. Your health is actually predicated on a wide range of issues. Your education, your housing, your nutrition, your connectedness with your community, the quality of your relationships, all sorts of things. So what social prescribing does is it offers clinicians and social workers to use that wide angle lens to appreciate the whole person and understand there may be things that are affecting that person's health and well-being that are not traditionally clinical. A colleague of ours, a GP in Exeter, did a two-week piece of work and in that two weeks he, he was able to tell us that between 40 and 55 percent of every patient that he saw didn't need to see a doctor, didn't have a clinical need. So if we can reduce the number of people who are presenting to the general practitioner, um, then we're going to take some of the pressure out of the system. So not only do people get their needs met, but it helps the people who run services. So for us, this just makes everybody's life better. Social prescribing has really reached a tipping point in the UK, and it's partly because their health system is really fundamentally strained. So they need to find ways to save money, to be more efficient, um, and to not overspend on complex, expensive medical interventions for problems that are not medical in nature. So finding ways to find less costly, locally based, locally appropriate solutions, that's what it's really all about there. You know, a new concept of doctors working with lay people. And, and uh, I think it's a really good idea. A really good idea. And I'm hoping it's gonna spread right across the country. I think there's a lot of skills in the, in, in the champions that could be utilized to uh, offset or augment the medical. So by reducing the repeat visits all the time, then that way the uh, doctors are less stressed. Uh, people are getting helped in, in better ways that the doctor can't help them with. So I think it's a win-win for everybody. When we shift the language away from patients with needs to people with gifts, it really fundamentally changes what we think we're doing when we're doing healthcare. Would you be interested in meeting with our navigator? Chuck was a uh, depressed fellow who was keen to do some fishing. That, that was something that was a, a need that he had uh, raised through one of our uh, staff members at the health center. And uh, I heard about it and uh, volunteered to provide him a, a fishing rod and uh, take him fishing in a few places. The non-medical thing that we did to help Chuck was uh, social prescribing, reaching out to resources and seeing how we can help him. And uh, it seems to have really worked for Chuck. Uh, to see somebody benefit from that minimal effort on my part is, is rewarding. It's going to look really different in each setting. So for example, we have a, a northern centre, we have a, a francophone centre, we have downtown urban centres focused on immigrant populations, we have rural centres with an older ageing population. Really different kinds of places that will require their own specialised 
approaches. In our area, people retire there as a couple in their 60s, and by their 70s, oftentimes one of them's gone. And so we recognize that that group of people had a common problem, and that was being alone suddenly and often unexpected. So we connected with other people that had the same experience, and uh, the, the, the healing was, was remarkable. So it was nice to be with this group because we all had the same background. We'd all lost somebody, so we could talk to each other and know how each other felt. In fact, I felt very isolated uh, because my late husband, we had uh, a nurse come to the home about the last six months, oxygen delivered. And when he passed away, that all stopped. And it was, there was nothing. So you, you really had to find something to do, otherwise you would go into depression. At one time, a doctor that I had wrote me a prescription and gave it to me, and it simply said, have more fun. And well, that's what I'm learning how to do. And who would have thought at this time in my life, after having spent 59 years with one woman, that I would ever have this wonderful opportunity to have a new life with Christine. Our community health center is really active in, in the community. It offers all kinds of programs. And I think people are used to going there for different supports. Welcome. We were really lucky that the Body community health here. center got some seed funding to try and do the mindfulness Feeling course here. You're sitting on your mat. I put mindfulness into my life every day because it's medicine to me. You know, I don't have to see, for example, I was seeing a social worker. I don't need that now. My doctor sees me once in a while, but yeah, you don't, no, you don't have to see your doctors as much. And that's huge. Social prescribing is not simply giving somebody a list of email addresses or telephone numbers that you think might possibly enable them to answer their problem. That's quite cold and impersonal, and a lot of people that we're helping have already been let down or failed to find their own solutions through a complicated system already. So social prescribing must necessarily be personal and follow the individual through until the point you know for sure they've found the answer to their particular selection of problems and questions. So the mum that um, we had today is someone who is, has moved into our area who doesn't have um, her own social network. And so social prescribing helps us to have a framework within which to link that mum to different things, both within our agency and outside of our agency. As well, because I do that whole perinatal spectrum, it's really it's nicer for mums if they get to know you prenatally to actually follow through for some of those things. Because I know that that individual uh, relationship, that individual touch of actually knowing somebody can make a big difference in what you're willing to attempt or try and can make a big difference both in your mental health but also in the growth and development of your children. I see them come back having had that kind of help. They use the medical bit much better, their self-esteem and their dignity and that sense of belonging and just fulfilled lives is immense. And I strongly believe as a general practitioner that social prescribing is the most important transformative initiative that I've ever encountered in 30 years working in health. That's England. It's happening in Canada. We've got people talking about it in Australia, in Italy, in Holland, in Ireland. This isn't going back into the bottle. Let's transform UK and Ontario and then the rest of the world. People know that hospitals have their role, but they, don't, they can't solve all the health problems people are facing. So it's up to community. And that's where we see a huge role to play in the future for community health centers and this kind of work in social prescribing.